Peter Hauk and I'm from Cambridge, Massachusetts. My life is sort of divided into two, two parts. So part of my life I'm a studio artist and have a studio in North Cambridge and then on the other side of Cambridge I have another life where I'm the director of the MIT Glass Lab. So I divide my time pretty equally between those two lives. This series, the Big Dig series, I started in I think about 1992 or 1993 and I've been doing that series on and off ever since. The general name for the process is called the Graal process and that's, that's a Swedish word and it's a, it's a kind of a generic term that refers to blowing a thick seed shape, then after it's cold, reworking it in some way. So this is, this is my take on the Graal concept that is kind of that of a printmaker. So it's, this is just exactly like an intaglio etching in a lot of ways where I've got the imagery, these are pictures that I took. I then had photographic sandblast stencils made, sandblasted through them with a very fine medium into the surface of the glass, but enough, enough incising there that you can then wipe paint into it and then off the surface, just like an etching. When I was here in April, the crew made 12 blanks for me. Actually, they made 15 blanks, but I got 12 ready, painted, sandblasted, painted, and shipped back out here. So we'll be picking up all 12 of those blanks. And I want to try pushing the work in a new direction. I want to oh. increase the scale, make the work a little bigger in some cases, and I'm trying some new shapes. So I'm taking an old series that I've worked with for a while and pushing it in a couple new directions. One of the things that I like the most about working this way is that there's an unpredictability in what's going to happen to the image, especially when we work on a really long shape like this and distort it a lot. The images get really tall and they twist a little bit sometimes and sometimes that doesn't work too well but in this case it's it's really good. This is one of the biggest ones of these that's ever been made too. So the virtual cane project started, it was a result of a visit that Lino Talia Pietra made to MIT three years ago and he was having a conversation with Eric and Marty Domain who are uh, People work in the computer science department at MIT and in the MIT Glass Lab. And they asked Lino, just sort of casually, do you think that every design, every type of design that could be designed in Kane, any kind of geometry has already been invented? And Lino said, no, I think there's some new ones that haven't been. So that, that sparked this idea to develop a virtual Kane software program that would be an interactive program for glass blowers to use to figure out different geometries in cane and then try to make the cane and see if it would work. Um, these are some screen prints, kind of screen grabs of some different geometries. A lot of these are um, easy to draw and really hard to make. So that's why I wanted to work on these here because these are some of the best gaffers you're going to find anywhere. If this cane can be made, these are the guys that can make the cane. Oh, nice. So you're picking up cane around a cylinder and then flattening one side of it. Here the cane is red on, in the helix, but we just substituted black there. He's creating a flat spot and then pushing it so that when the next shape goes onto it, the joint between the two shapes will be the new center of the piece. So there will be a white and a black helix at that center, and everything else will be turning around that center. Cane. You did a good job keeping the helix in the center, so it's it's a white and black helix, and yeah, this is kind of what it's supposed to be. This is some nice cane. So there's a black helix in the middle, and then a white 
probably can't see the white against the paper, but there you go. A white lattice that turns and hits the helix every other revolution. I just want to thank the museum for inviting me out here to do this. I'm really appreciative. It's very exciting for me to, to uh, take another leap forward in this series I've been working on for a long time. So uh, thanks everybody in Tacoma.